morning, everyone. I hope everyone, everything is all right but, uh, at you, at your place, and uh, you had fun hacking so far. Um, for, as, as a nice energizer for you, uh, we would like to introduce you to Julia Papotti from the CERN Yoga Club. And she will conduct a, a morning exercise session uh, on yoga to get some oxygen in your, in your system. And uh, without any further delay, uh, I'll bring you Julia. Thanks for being on our uh, on the webfest, Julia. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, and well, have a very good day to everybody. Have a very good weekend. Um, what we're doing is um, so I assume that not everybody had done yoga before. So what I set up is a sequence in which we're doing rather slow movement, and we concentrate on doing the movement together with the breath. So it's a typical vinyasa flow class, like a lower level so that anybody can join. And as I cannot see you, I'll try and instruct you verbally about what to do, but there should be no poses that pose any risk, let's say, so it should be safe. Um, you got three options, I thought. You can follow only the movement, or if you prefer, you follow only the breath. Or for the ones who have done yoga before, maybe they manage to follow both. Um, so we just get started, right? So I'll, uh, something to reassure you, uh, given that we're doing movement with the breath, I'll be coming back to the same movements on and on so that you get a chance to, even the ones who haven't done them before, they get a chance to get used to them and enjoy. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna start from a pose that is called child's pose. So we're just gonna sit back on our heels or maybe slightly lifted if you're, if your knees are happy with that. And you just straighten your arms ahead and you get your head in contact with the floor. You just take a couple of breaths here, just to ground ourselves. Feeling the contact of the forearms with the floor in the contact of the forehead with the floor, feeling the shins pressing down. And then we start breathing all together. So we start with an exhale. Inhale. Exhale. On the next inhale, you come on all fours. So we're pressing down our hands and our knees into the floor. This is just called all fours. So it's simply that we're on our knees and on our hands, but we're paying attention to the fact that our knees are par uh, like our thigh bones are parallel and our arms are parallel also, and that we're pressing down with your hand in all the palm of the hand a simple pose, but what we're start doing is moving our back and our up to our neck, all the way to our lower back. So on the inhales, you drop your belly and you look up. And on the exhale, you do the opposite way. You look in and you lift your belly button to the spine. Inhale and you arch. This is called a cow. Exhale to the cat pose, looking down and lifting your belly. Looking up, forward and up, getting your shoulder blades more close together. And then looking down and spreading the space in between your shoulder blades. Inhaling to arch. And exhaling the opposite way. Inhaling, arching. And exhaling. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Sitting back to child's pose. We rotate through six poses on the breath. So I'll show you the poses first so that you get an idea. We'll be in child's pose for an exhale. 
And then on the inhale, we come on all fours that you've just seen. So you're just making sure you're pressing down the whole palm of your hand all onto the floor. The next exhale, you curl your toes under, pressing the knees back and the hips high, and it's gonna be downward dog. The next inhale, we shift the weight forward, pulling the core together for a plank. And then we're setting the knees down. We're making it all the way to the floor, keeping a plank, but bending at the elbows and lowering with control. And then from here, you point your toes again, lifting the head, lifting the shoulder, looking forward and up, cobra, and then we're gonna be exhaling back. And we're back at the starting point. So here we go, exhaling here. Inhaling to all fours. Curling the toes under, exhaling for plank, for plank, sorry, for downward dog. Inhaling forward for plank, remember engage your core. Exhaling the knees down and then bending the elbows all the way to the floor. Inhaling the head and the shoulders up. And exhaling back, sitting balls to the heels. Doing it another few times. Inhale all fours. Curling the toes. Exhale, hips high. Inhale for plank. Exhale, knees down, bending the elbows. Inhaling up and forward. The sternum goes up and forward. Exhaling back. Inhaling, go fours. Exhaling, lifting the hips. Inhaling for plank. Engage the core. Exhale, knees down, bending at the elbows all the way to the floor. Pointing the toes, inhaling and sternum forward and up. Exhaling back, sitting balls to the heels. Inhaling all fours. Curling the toes, exhaling hips high. Inhaling for plank, engaging the belly. Exhaling, knees down, all the way to the floor. Inhaling the sternum forward and up, shoulders back. Exhaling, heels to the, sorry, sitting balls to the heels. Inhaling, all fours. Exhaling, you're curling the toes, lifting the heels, the, sorry, lifting the hips. Inhaling for plank. And exhaling, knees down all the way to the floor. Inhaling, sternum forward and up. Exhaling back. Last round. Inhaling, all fours. Exhaling, curling the toes, sitting bones high. Inhaling for plank, core engaged, your straight plank. Exhaling, knees to the floor, all the way to the floor. And inhaling, sternum forward and up. Exhaling, sitting balls to the heels. Taking a breath here. Exhaling here. Inhaling all fours. Curling the toes under. And then lifting the sitting balls to high. And we just stay here for a breath. So what you can do is lift the heels, 
ban one knee at a time on the exhale. Inhale and lift both. Exhale, ban one knee and drive the other heel to the ground. Inhale both. Exhale one. Inhale both, lift. Exhale one, false. Inhale both, lifts. And then you're coming to settle in the pose. We just hold it for a couple of breaths here. So you want to make sure the palm of the hand is all pressing into the floor. If your heels touch the ground, you're open on the back side. If they don't, that's okay. Making sure you're pressing the floor away so that you're lengthening your, your arms and your spine. Shifting the feet back into the middle. Lifting the right leg up. And I mean back and up. Exhaling, bringing the knee towards the hands. And then we're dropping the back knee. So if you don't have a yoga mat, which might be the case, you can use anything, any piece of cloth or pillow or t-shirt, towel, anything to do some padding underneath the knee in case it hurts. What I want you to do is just lift up and then we stay here. So you're pointing your back toes and then we just stay in this pose. It's really good. So I just shift a little bit. We just want to lengthen the hip flexors because I assume if you're typing all day for the web fast, you're probably typing also often in the week. It's just nice to do the opposite movement at the hip. So you have to find a place in which you find a stretch that is not too painful, but that does some work. So I let you start from standing like this or shifting the weight a little bit further, further down. And like your choice, how low you wanna go. I said you wanna feel something, but you don't wanna regret it tomorrow, right? <laughs> so you can even place your hands on the floor depending on how far you go. If you're on the knee, it's also good. We stay one more breath. And then we're taking both hands onto the floor. I move away my towel. <clears throat> Lifting the back leg, we find back ourselves in the downward dog that we were taking before. Taking the feet into the middle, lifting the left leg, back and up. And then you step on the exhale. You step the foot towards the hands, dropping the right knee down, placing your towel or pillow, piece of cloth, anything that is soft. And then you find the place where you find the stretch, pointing the back toes. And then from here, it's your journey. If we were in the same room, I could maybe help you, but with just a video connection, just start going down and then you see and you feel where you wanna stop. And this is something you might wanna do at the end of the day. If you've been sitting on the computer like me all day, it's a good thing to do. Couple more breaths. Maybe pay attention to the fact that the two sides are different. So it's likely that you're not in the same place you were on with the other leg. It's partly due to driving. If you're driving every day for, the, for a considerable amount of time, the two legs do different things there. And that will affect you throughout the lifetime of driving. And then both hands onto the floor, setting the towel aside, <coughs> shifting back downward dog, exhaling here, inhaling for plank. Again, core engaged, belly button lifts towards the spine. And then you can set the knees down. The ones who have been doing yoga before, they can go all the way down with this, without setting the knees down. And then we do the same as before. We lift the head, the shoulders, and we take the shoulders back. We stay here for a couple of breaths.
And then you can even lift your hands off the floor. Cuckoo. And you can see that it's only your back muscles that work. Next inhale, you lift a little bit higher. And on the exhale, you release. Shifting the hips back to the heels and coming back for a double dog. So the hips are high and the hands and the feet are pressing into the floor really strongly. Lifting the right leg back and up and stepping the foot towards the hands. And we just come up like that. Now, depending on the days, balance is with us or not as much. So if you need to stay here and just balance, that's okay. Otherwise you can join me for a shoulder stretch. So we're opening the arms to the side or bending at the elbow and we cross the elbows. So the right elbow is below the left elbow. If you can, you might be able to double cross the arms, the, the hands, so you cross and double cross. If you don't manage, that's okay also. So you're holding the balance and then what the work you're doing is you're lifting the elbows, but you're lowering the shoulders and you're looking at your hands. And I'm assuming that after an intense day of, of typing today, you might wanna do this again. It might be helpful. One last breath. Releasing the arms, coming back the same way we came into the pose, opening the arms to the side, both hands onto the floor, lifting the leg back and up, and then sending it down. Lifting the left, back, left leg on the inhale, and using the exhale to bring the knee to the chest, dropping the foot towards the floor. Next inhale, you come up, finding the balance and opening the arms to the side, bending at the elbows, crossing the arms so that the left elbow is below the right one. As on the other side, if you manage to, I'm not sure you can see, if you manage to double fold the hands, that's okay. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. The work is lifting the, the elbows and lowering the shoulders. Looking at your hands. Slowing down your breath. And then coming up to the pose, you release the arms first, opening them to the side to start with. And then both hands onto the floor. Shifting the left foot towards the right, <clears throat> you'll find yourself in plank. Just hold it there for a breath. Belly button to the spine. And then setting the knees down or not, all the way to the floor. Pointing the arms backward. And then again, lifting the head and the shoulders. And maybe lifting the legs also. Legs are straight. And you're trying not to clench your buttocks too much. So you can see that you can get the legs on the floor without having your butt super tight. It does need to work, but it doesn't have to be the only thing that works. One more breath here. Hands come next to the chest, lowering the legs. Shifting the weight back, sitting most of the heels, and then lifting up the heels to the, the heels go high. Sorry, hips go high. <clears throat> lifting the right leg, back and up, stepping the right foot, right foot towards the hands and spinning the back heel flat so that the foot, the foot, the back foot is pointing in by like 45 degrees or something like that. 
with me in the arms, you find yourself a very famous pose, this warrior two. So the front thigh is as low as parallel to the floor. And you're looking at the right hand. Maybe you wanna check the back arm. Is it as high as you thought? Ideally it's parallel to the floor. One more breath. And then from here on the inhale, you straighten the front leg. You're driving back the hips slightly so that you find length on the right side of the torso, reaching far with the hand and then placing it either on the shin, at the ankle or on the floor, opening to the side, you're opening to your right side and lifting the left arm towards the ceiling, looking at the sky. Breathing. Both hands onto the floor, spinning the back heel high again, and then stepping the right foot back. One breath in the downward facing dog, and then lifting the left leg back and up, stepping left foot towards the hands. So again, the right foot spins down so that the heel is in contact with the floor, 45 degrees at least. When you the arms, bend as low as you can. The limit is the front thigh parallel to the floor. Belly button in, some engagement of the core. And maybe you look back at your back arm. Is it parallel to the floor or not? One more breath in the warrior. And then big inhale, straightening the front leg, driving back the left hip so that I can take as much length as possible on the left side, reaching far. And then ideally same position that you had on the other side, either the shin, the ankle, or the floor, inside or outside. Opening to the side and lifting your right arm up, looking at your right hand. Lengthening the breath. And then both hands onto the floor, stepping left foot back, spinning your right foot so that the heel is high. Then holding the plank, setting the knees down if you want. If you've been done yoga, doing yoga before, you can just hold the plank, lower all the way to the floor. And again, arms point back the head, the shoulders, and the leg, legs lift off the floor. So I'm coming back to this pose because it's an excellent counter pose for sitting at the desk. So many of us are crunching the shoulders and hunching forward. So with this, you're doing the exact opposite, which is a super counter pose. You're not balancing out eight, eight hours <laughs> of this with eight hours of sitting but our bodies are fantastic. So even just a little time every day in the opposite position would be great help. Hands onto the floor and then shifting the weight back. Finding yourself to a seat. So what we're doing is uh, a short sequence of exercises which are really good in case you have a low back pain. So I'll give you a few options so that you can even take it home and maybe repeat it if you need it over the course of your life. Let me just change a little bit the setup here. One second, there you go. So we're doing the two legs separately. You can work on the right leg with the left leg straight or if that's too much, you bend the left leg. <clears throat> the right leg can also be straight, only if the left leg is also straight, but you can keep this one bent and that one straight also. So what we're doing is first interlacing the fingers and driving the knee towards the chest. Super useful to lengthen the spine. Slowing down the breath, because we're reaching the end of class. 
taking the outside of the right foot with the right hand and driving the knee towards the armpit, right knee towards the right armpit. Letting go, grabbing right hand to right knee and opening to the side, getting the right knee closer to the floor and you're using the left hand to press down on the left hip. And then switching hands with the knee, lifting the right knee from the right side, you push it towards the left side, opening the right arm, towards the right side and looking at your right hand. One more breath here. Coming back, right knee into the middle and then you can set it down. Taking the left leg into the chest, making sure your spine is straight, your torso is straight. Again, your options are either doing the exercise left leg bent and right leg bent, or if you want a little bit more, then the right leg can be straight. So the first thing, you interlace your fingers and you drive left knee into the chest. One more breath. Taking the outside of the left foot with the left hand, getting left knee towards left armpit. And you're preparing right hand on the right hip. Left foot releases, and then you're taking left hand to left knee, opening to the side. Then switching hands, the left knee goes back towards the middle and then to the outside. Opening the left arm towards the left side completely and looking at your left hand. Looking up. Taking the left knee back into the middle, taking the right with it. <coughs> Just massaging your lower back by rolling a little bit from side to side. You can even draw circles with the knees, hands on the knees. Nice massage for the sacrum. Dropping the knees to the right and looking at your left. Looking up, taking the knees back into the middle, dropping them to the left, opening right arm to the side, looking at your right hand. Coming back to the middle, actually dropping to the right and using your hands to push yourself to a seat. Ideally your head comes up last, Taking a seat, we'll just take a couple of closing breaths. My suggestion is to put your hands on your belly so that you feel the movement of the breath. And then taking your hands into the chest. On the next inhale, you lift your heart. And on the next exhale, you draw your head. Thanks for sharing your practice with me today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great fun day today. Great fun day tomorrow. Enjoy.